Hello everyone, Hannah Michaels has published a hot new article that I'd like to bring to your attention. Very timely, these protesters want to declare their freedom from the Queen of England and bring back God's laws. And anyone who considers themselves a Christian should be championing God's laws. And God's laws are the primarily the first five books of the Old Testament, called the Torah. And anyone who considers themselves a Christian and is not trying to follow and implement God's law here on planet Earth is confused and not really a Christian, because that's what Jesus did when he came 2,000 years ago. He preached to the scribes and the Pharisees of his day, told them to stop following the Talmud back in that day, and today it's Parliament over across the pond. So these people in Scotland are trying to break out of that realm, and they have a case going on right now where Parliament in Scotland wants to evict them. Well, they had a hearing yesterday. I posted a video um, a day or two ago, and also I have provided a tweet link if you'd like to follow the tweet of what took place at the trial. We all know that the world is ruled by Satan and Satanists, which is why God's law does not pertain on this planet. It's all man-made laws and legislation. Well, the second coming of Christ is here, and he's the king of Scotland, and he has given these indie camp campaigners permission to hold their vigil in Scotland, in Holyrood. And I would like to read this article to you. The indie camp appeal hearing was technically an open and shut case. Appellants were quickly ushered through the proceedings in only one of two days scheduled, concluding with the announcement that the judges would provide a written response at a later date. Philip Sims' article, Judges Retire to Consider Indie Camp Eviction Appeal, gives more detail. Feel free to click on the link. I'll provide all links down below. This day in court proved again that the judicial system in Scotland is corrupt. Some plays, quote unquote, were made that altogether seemed calculated, including one arrest. This isn't the arrest you'll be thinking of after reading Sim's article or reviewing his tweets about the hearing. And here's a screen capture clip. The man who says he is Christ is standing on a bench shouting about miscarriage of justice. The police are chasing him. The person who made a timely spectacle of himself in court wearing a gold robe and a red sash saying he was Jesus seemed to enter the stage right on cue. Although he had to be removed from the court by police, sources say that after the hearing, media reps spoke with him outside. For those of you who do not know him, Ja would have never done this in court. The man in this mock charade obviously wanted to discredit the seriousness of the Lord Council. If Ja had done what this actor did, he would have been arrested and not interviewed. I have to agree. The opposition goes to great lengths to mock him, but they also go to extremes to hide his presence when they can't mock what he says. This is why he's blacklisted from mainstream media unless it's used to mock him. Even that is sparingly, because they absolutely do not want to draw any attention to Ja or anything he says or writes, like the way home or face the fire. The fact that Phil Sims tries to be fair and offers coverage of all sides is appreciated. Please note that McFarlane misspoke in the hearing about the year the UK authorities were notified it was June 13, 1988, as outlined in the way to a mouse again. Interestingly, according to one tweet, the trial was ranked number five for the most trended topic that day, yet it's treated as a non-news event by most. And the untold news is the arrest of Stephen Criley. Just after the hearing, what timing, but they like to make points. Criley is a friend of Jazz 
who's been looking for the stone of destiny and supporting IndyCamp's goal of an independent Scotland. He has applied to be the lay representative of Maureen McLeod, one of the appellants, but was denied. However, Mr. Keatings was approved to lay represent the four-member appellant group. Cryley is best known for his search for the Stone of Destiny, traveling around Scotland speaking to people, making videos of progress made, encouraging Scotland to bring out the Stone for Christ, and campaigning for Scotland's independence through the True Jubilee. If you've seen video of Richard McFarlane speaking, Stephen Cryley is probably behind the camera. One of his latest videos is The Stone of Destiny, Glasgow. 2016. He is also featured in the Seven Hills Ripple Effect by Tony Farrell as one of the two shofar blowers. Stephen Cryley and Richard McFarlane assisted Farrell in his Seven Hills Horizon project, sounding off shofars at key places around the UK to help bring the walls of corruption down. Cryley thought it odd that the police, who were at the hearing, waited until after it was over to detain him outside St. John's Cathedral. Two officers arrived to take him to the police station for questioning regarding written threats. During his police interview, they presented him with a small highlighted section of page nine of Christ's second affidavit, basically the part about how the law calls for executions. They had evidence of it being submitted to court, although during the hearing they said that it went missing. Parentheses. They said they had evidence of him posting it. They wanted to know if he had signed it, Christ. Revelation 17:14. These shall make war against the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. After spending the night in jail, Crowley went before the sheriff's court, which is not a public court, and thus media is not allowed. His bail conditions include him staying away from certain individuals, the court of sessions, and two post offices in Edinburgh. As this story develops, other articles may proceed. As far as the reaction goes about the show trial or hearing, it's obvious they want it over as quickly as possible. They work for the government they aren't going to find against the government because they cannot be impartial, said Ja. And it sounds like Leona Dorian was handpicked. During this hearing, it was voiced by all four groups that a jury trial should be conducted. This is a logical and sensible conclusion by all four groups, yet the biased court denies them this opportunity. Judges run in private circles, have corporate investments, and are assigned to cases where conflicts of interest are obviously present, that is, Dun Blaine. The Scottish Parliamentary Corporate Body, SPCB, attorney Jerry Monaghan said that there was no question the IndyCamp trial was fair. Of course there's question. There have always been questions. Who is he fooling with this rhetoric? In this hearing, we learn that Ja Christ's second affidavit went missing. Before the submission deadline for documents, it was sent twice to the court by registered mail. Richard McFarlane videotaped the process of mailing it. The affidavit was also hand-delivered in a timely manner, twice in person. How does this not point to corruption within? But the system that is devouring us doesn't fight fair, just as pointed out at the procedural hearing on September 27th where David brought up the issue of phone hacking and data collection. IndyCamp protesters claim their phones are being hacked. Phone hacking is commonplace in a corrupt system because truth isn't on their side. Look at Rupert Murdoch, associated with politicians like Thatcher, Blair, and Cameron. Families in the Hillsborough disaster had their phones hacked as well as families of the 7-7 bombings. They the hierarchy enslaving you, must control and squash the truth at all costs. When the truth comes out, their modus operandi is to ignore it, so the system, and it is a beast,
conveniently loses evidence like Christ's second affidavit concerning Turnbull's decision. They are ignoring it because they cannot argue against it, said Ja, when asked what he thought. He also pointed out that he dealt only with the evidence from the original trial, and he picked apart Turnbull's decision. His second affidavit can be read here at King of Scotland on Tony Farrell's website. Ja sadly yet firmly said, people don't want God's law. That's why the war, World War III, is going to happen. The war is going to happen because it is the only way to wake people up. God is going to punish his witness nations for not returning to his law, his ways. This includes Scotland. Scriptures from the King of Kings Bible, Genesis 38:27, that support. Everyone is complacent and content to have a beast system rule over, enslave, and impoverish them. They enable it and feed it. God will bring everyone to their knees and beg for his forgiveness and mercy. And this lesson is going to hurt, where billions are going to die in the war. We've already been whipped, but we still do not learn. We love our captor, the system, and this form of enslavement has not been enough to rally the nations who would rather play nice with the system than fight for the trial of justice for all. At the hearing, David pointed out that the judges could not judge the case and asked for a jury trial. Jah's response was, what David said was perfectly true. It would be nice for the people to see that and rise up. There will be no justice otherwise. Jah clarifies that Stephen is falsely accused of sending threatening letters. There is no threat, unless they refuse to obey the law and Elizabeth Mary Alexander Battenberg swore to maintain to the utmost of her power God's law. If they consider it a threat, then they are admitting for all the world to see that they refuse to obey the law and are proving themselves beyond doubt to be criminals. This is a historic momentous case that's taking place right now and the only way that World War III can be avoided is if people rise up and defend and fight to implement God's law. If God sees people trying to bring back his law here on planet Earth, if people are too complacent to care, those who call themselves Christians, and they don't stand up and fight man-made legislation, then God is going to allow the wrath of World War III to take place and the two witnesses, Great Britain and the United States, will fall. Okay guys, live in love. Peace.